In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up a project and start entering Verilog code and then run through the Verilog simulator and verify that it works as well as creating a test bench in the Verilog design simulator to verify that your design is working. First thing we need to do is create a new project. Uh, we'll give this a quick name. We'll make sure that our top level source type is set for HDL, for Hardware Description Language. We review the project settings to make sure that we've selected the appropriate type. In this case, we are using a Vertex 5 uh, LX110T device, speed grade 3. We'll hit finish. And over here, we can click and we'll make a new source. And in this example, we want to create a new Verilog module. And I'm going to follow an example from the book uh, on page 116, which is a very simple combinational model. So we're going to call this example 3.4 from the textbook. The first screen that comes up asks you to identify the input and output ports. This particular example from the book uses a, B, C, D, E, and F. E and F are output. And A, B, C, and D are input. So we can go ahead and type those in, make sure that the outputs are set correctly, inputs are set correctly. You may notice that there's a third option, in, out. This is actually what we call a tri-state gate. And we'll learn more about that in the future. Um, for now, uh, let's just make sure things are set for input or output. Uh, everything looks correct. And so what we see is that the ISC tool has laid out a sample Verilog file for us. At the very top, it has the backtick time scale, one nanosecond slash one picosecond. This is the resolution of time that we're going to use for the simulator. Um, and this is the degree of accuracy, essentially, that we're looking for. Um, and this is noted in the textbook as well. We'll see here that the Verilog that's created looks a little different from that described in the textbook. This is actually using uh, a newer syntax of Verilog, where we're describing a port as output or input in the argument list as opposed to where the book has it listed as arguments and then input output statements. Either one of those are acceptable um, since the, the ISE tool has graciously created this file for us. We'll leave it as it is. And now our job is to write the code. So this is the code um, we're assigning to the E wire, a combination of our input wires. And at this point, the code should be ready to go. So the next step is to um, synthesize and just make sure that we can get through this first stage. This first stage will actually allow us to verify that the code has been typed in correctly and that we do not have any syntax errors. And the good news is it looks like we don't have any syntax errors. At the same time, we can actually go and we can look at the schematic that was generated by Verilog. And what we are able to see as we move around this example are all of the different gate assignments to our signals. And these shouldn't be terribly surprising at this stage simply because of the fact that uh, this models very closely what it is that our code typed in. But that's not really what we're after here. What we're really after here is the ability to simulate our model. So at this stage, we've typed in the code, we are ready to simulate, and so the appropriate action is to go on the top of our design view. We see that we have iSim simulation, and we should be able to actually click on simulate behavioral model, and at this point, it will actually do a pretty interesting thing. Um, in the background, it will compile 
the Verilog code into a C language executable for our target architecture. And then it will run that C language executable in the background and allow us to interface to it with the ISIM window. What we'll see here is we actually see the code and I could go ahead and run this code. I probably don't want to run it for a whole microsecond. A whole microsecond is going to be a thousand nanoseconds and that's just a long time to wait when we're operating at the nanosecond scale. So I'm going to go ahead and run this for 10 nanoseconds and what we'll find, and make sure you click on run, otherwise it will run forever. So we're going to run with the hourglass to run our sample here for 10 nanoseconds and what we find is it doesn't do anything. Uh, in fact what we find here are these are undefined values. Uh, blue means that the input was not defined, red means the output was not defined by our module. So clearly something else has to go on and what's missing here is we're missing the test bench. So we're going to go ahead and close the simulator and we're going to um, click here, we're going to make new source and in this case we're going to choose to make a Verilog test fixture and we're going to test example 34. For those of our CS students who have taken uh, our test driven development courses, this is not uh, an unusual step for you. The test bench has been created. Now we can see what it's done. And it's essentially wrapped our module, um, always described as UUT or unit under test. And we see that it's created registers which are placeholders, They're actually variables that we can assign values. And in fact, initially all the values here are defined as zero. And there's a delay. This pound hundred means it's going to delay for 100 cycles. In our case, at the time scale of one nanosecond, uh, 100 cycles is 100 nanoseconds. So after 100 nanoseconds now, um, we can assign values to some of the input and verify that the output is correct. So for example, we can say that A equals one, B equals one, and we have to wait for a period of time um, until that circuit has settled. And in this case, we'll wait for 10. And if, say for example, we think that E is supposed to still be equal to zero, um, we can actually check and say that if E does not equal zero, um, then we can display an error message, error unexpected output. And in Verilog, if statements are just if and end, if begin, end. Um, at this point, we could also finish by using the finish task. Display is not like printf. It's not a function that's called. It's actually a task that the simulator is performed. This is not anything that begins with a dollar sign is not synthesizable through the logic. Finish is another task that ends the simulation at that particular point. Otherwise, we could wait another delay and do another series of values and then another set of tests. Uh, so at this point, we can use the behavioral check syntax and verify that our design is correct. And in this case, it comes back and says, no, there's been an error. Error was on line 61. And in Verilog, of course, um, this is not the symbol for not equal. So we'll change that to be appropriate and we'll save our file, run the behavioral check syntax again, and verify that it is complete correctly, and now we should be able to actually simulate the behavioral model. So again, in the background, we see it compiling the code, our simulator comes up, and in this particular case, it automatically ran our code and hit the finish statement, and we can see down here that we actually got an unexpected output error and if we look at the wave window, we can actually see what the wave window looked like. We see that we have some signals now that are high. This is some that are low. This is actually designed to look like an oscilloscope display where we have magnitude of a, a voltage over time. It's not actually simulating voltage levels. It's simulating logic high, logic low. 
Um, we can click on, I always say this looks like a life preserver, but it's just a zoom to full. We can see that the first 100 nanoseconds was idle. Um, we changed some of our input values and we see that the output values changed uh, correspondingly. So this is the beginning of how you'd use the simulator to uh, simulate Verilog code, uh, as well as using the test code to test it all, make sure that it's correct.